Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. Welcome. My name is Pat Damer. I'm the acting director of the Office of Science, and we sponsor the finals of the National Science Bowl. Welcome to the 25th annual competition of the National Science Bowl. Congratulations to every single one of you who is sitting here today. 15,000 students started on this journey with you, and you are here today as the best of them. Uh, over the course of the National Science Bowl, the 25-year history, 250,000 students have competed. Uh, we're so pleased that we could touch so many students in a science competition. Uh, did you have a good time this weekend? High, high school students, did you enjoy Science Day? Yeah. <laughs> How, ma how many want to be just like Doug Robel? Yeah, that was the, if, I, if I could start all over, I would be just like Doug, Doug Robel. You know, um, in, the, in the months leading up to the final, there are thousands of volunteers who help with this program. I think about five or 6,000 volunteers helped this year. Uh, many of them from the Department of Energy, but most of them helped with the regionals. We have a number of DOE volunteers with us today. Just raise your hand. Probably see, uh, you can clap for them. By the way, this is an aside. I just love the fact that the shirts, for the most part, are fluorescent. That is so cool standing up here. I'd also like to recognize one other person, and that's Jan Tyler. I don't know where Jan is. Where's Jan? There's Jan down here. I have watched Jan for many years now run the Science Bowl. She is an absolute phenomenon. She knows every detail from the beginning of the regionals to the end of this year's competition here today. Um, not only that, but I've watched her control many hundreds of students at the 4-H Center, that would be you folks, uh, that are young, full of energy, and, and completely filled with adrenaline for the entire weekend. And she does a fabulous job. Let's please thank Jan. I have no clue how she does this. We're so pleased today to have David Zarin back with us to MC the finals of the National Science Bowl. Many of you know, I think, that for more than 20 years, David has been the weather forecaster at ABC7 News Channel 8 here in Washington, DC. But perhaps less well known it, to the DC audience, to most of us here, is that for nearly a decade, he's been the host of Baltimore City's version of It's Academic. In addition, he's written, produced, and hosted award-winning science and public affairs and uh, programs, including Give Science a Hand, Science Bowl, and Under the Microscope. David has received many awards for his work as a science teacher, a television host and producer, and a space educator. He continues to produce and host public television programs with the Office of Television and Web Resources in Prince George's County. It's really great to have David back with us. Please give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. It's just great to be back here. And Jan said to me before I came up, she said, now, Dave, I don't want any tributes. So Pat has already violated that rule. <laughs> and I come back here year after year because of you guys, and I care so much about the Science Bowl, but I'm really here because of Jan. Jan is self-effacing. She wants no attention, but she keeps everyone in line, including me, and makes sure that everything here works properly. You're going to have a great time. You already have. You'll get home exactly when you want to get home, all because Jan does it all and she never breaks a sweat. Jan, you're the best. You are just the best.
And those of you that have been coming here year after year, you know that we have gone from the National Geographic Auditorium to the Washington Convention Center to the Forrestall Building to the National Building Museum to here. And over the past few years, things have gotten a lot more sophisticated, a lot more elegant. Look at this stage. That's because Pat Damer has been reimagining the Science Bowl over the past couple of years, and she has made it into such an amazing competition that I was driving in this morning listening to WTOP, the top station here in Washington, and you guys were the headline. I heard Roberto Clemente mentioned. So everybody is watching, everybody is listening, and no matter where you finish in this competition, be assured you are all hometown heroes. Give yourselves a hand. You're great. You know, I was reflecting back, 1991, when all this started. That was before you were born. Talking to the kids, of course. Um, back then, Pluto was still a planet. Web specialists were spiders, if I remember. Watches just told time. And you poor guys didn't have to spend thousands of dollars and rent an airplane to get a prom date for your proposal. You know, over the last 25 years, we've been honored to have Ira Flato from PBS's Science Friday here with us. Bill Nye has been with us. All the secretaries of energy, and notably, most notably, Michelle Obama, the first lady, was here a few years ago, not just to speak, but also to ask questions. It's something none of us will ever forget. There have been moments over the past 25 years of high drama and also high mirth. Back in 2001, when North Hollywood won the championship, they won by knowing, among other things, the name of a disease. You never not saw someone so happy to get tuberculosis. And at the first ever middle school match, when asked in what state you would never find a mothball, the answer came back, California. Didn't understand sublimation too much. Of course, no answer has tested my ability to keep a straight face, as the question that recently came up at its academic in Baltimore. The question was, what woman is generally credited with sewing the first American flag? Three girls on the team looked at each other for a long minute, nodded, gave me a big smile and said, it was Betty White. <laughs> and they were serious. I sent out a text to Betty White and wrote back, she was thrilled. She's got a great sense of humor. As Pat was saying, today we have 48 middle schools and 68 high schools here. And we have 17 high schools and 7 middle schools that have never been here before. Those of you that are brand new, would you stand up so we can recognize you? Thanks for being part of Science Bowl. And I am sure many of you are in Washington for the very first time, and even though those of us have lived, that have lived here for 30 and 40 years, we are still overawed every time we come in here. The new Ferris wheel, the Capitol wheel down at the National Harbor, the new Air Force Memorial, the Capitol dome wrapped up like the biggest Christmas ornament you ever saw, gleaming at night. I hope you've had a chance to get out and about and really take in your nation's capital, because it's just, it is magnificent. You know, we have some schools here that are at the opposite end of the spectrum of the new schools. We have two schools here that have been here for 19 of our 25 years, and not coincidentally, they are vying today for the high school championship. They would be Mira Loma and Thomas Jefferson. Can you give them a hand? And the newsman in me loves the fact that today's winner will decide who has the most wins in Science Bowl history. They are tied at four apiece. No pressure, guys. No pressure. <laughs> but it's going to be a very dramatic finish here today. 
You know, over the past few days, I hope you've made some new friends and that you're going to stay in touch with them uh, as you go on. In fact, I hope some of you that are here for the first time are going to be here for many years ahead, not just as competitors, but as alums who come back to volunteer. You know, for the past 15 years, National Science Bowl alumni have been invited to come here and they participate as volunteers. They assist in a variety of tasks. You've seen them around. They serve as officials here, and most importantly, they are role models for students like you. This is not just a one-time event. This is a souvenir experience you will never forget, and hopefully you can continue to relive this by staying in touch with us and coming back and helping out in subsequent years. There are 23 alumni here today. One of them will be moderating this morning. Another is a judge. Two will be stage rules judges and several others will be throughout the room as judges as we have our final competitions. At this time, could we have all the National Science Bowl alumni please stand so we can recognize you. And I hope you take the time to read their bios in the program because these are highly accomplished people and we have not had a Nobel Prize yet among the group. It's probably too soon, but I would not be surprised if one of them will be our first Nobel laureate. One of the alumni, Juni Srihara, competed at the bowl here for Lubbock High School back in 1991 and 92 when we first started, that's 25 and 24 years ago, and Lubbock won the championship that year is Junie here? Junie, would you stand up so we can recognize you? Where is Junie? Wave to us. Right back there. Welcome back after all this time. There are two other individuals in the audience that participated in the very first National Science Bowl. In fact, they've been here for every one since. Linda Lung from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and Steve Zollinger from the Idaho National Laboratory have led regional science ball competitions all 25 years. Could you two please stand up so we can give you proper recognition? Very few people stay with something so long as you folks have, and uh, your dedication is just amazing, and uh, we appreciate it. And you got some good seats, too, today. You know, one of my favorite parts about the National Science Bowl is reading your biographies. It's incredible how accomplished many of you are already in your young lives. There are almost a dozen Eagle Scouts in the house today, including Ryan Bowers of Stockdale High School in California. And I'm also amazed at how funny you can be, sometimes on purpose. Nobel laureates, someday, maybe. Successors to John Stewart, I don't think so. For instance, Malia Matthews of University Prep High School in Redding, California, loves to tell a joke. She said, Mr. Zarin, I got to tell you this one. What did one copper atom say to another? I'll see you later. Oh. What do you get if you cross a dinosaur with a pig? Yep, Jurassic pork. That's better, Malia, that's better. And how about the English teacher who gave up on the apostrophe because it just got too darn possessive? I like that too. Gabriel Sparks of Stevens High School in Rapid City, South Dakota, Dakota admitted with some embarrassment that when one of the questions at the regionals as for the name of Jupiter's reflective power, he blurted out libido instead of albedo. <laughs> okay, Gabe, we know where your mind is. Many of you say that the camaraderie and the support here, ah, that's, that's all fine and good, but what the best thing about the Science Bowl is the food, yeah especially those delectable tater tots at breakfast. Many of you say you come here for the free Frisbees. And if you're Larry Chin, yeah, I know who you are. And if you're Larry Chin, he goes to Lesher Middle School in Fort Collins, Colorado. He's here because he's trying to get enough 
National Science Bowl polo shirts so he can have one for every day of the week. Larry, I don't know where you are. I'm, I'm sure you're a very nice guy. But watch your back, guys. Literally. He's, he's out to take the shirt right off it. Most of you shared your goals with me, your dreams, some of them more grandiose and mercenary than others. Chandler Kahn of Blue Valley West High School in Overland Park, Kansas, for instance, says, I want to study something in modern physics to cash in on all that sweet nuclear fusion money that's bound to be had. The American dream, striking it rich. Forget doing something good for society. That's all right, whatever you want to do. And this one I really like. Nicholas Amelinez Robles of Thomas Jefferson Middle School in Madison, Wisconsin, wants to be so successful at working at the CERN Super Collider in Switzerland that one day his name will be in lowercase letters as a unit of measurement. Right up there with the Watt, the Jewel, the Curie, and the Amelinez Robles. I got to tell you, Nick, that doesn't roll off the tongue yet. Not yet. And then there's Ben Riley of the Gatton Academy in Kentucky, who hopes to strike it rich with the best idea since actor Michael Keaton in Night Shift suggested that the fastest way to get tuna salad was simply to feed mayonnaise to the tuna. Yep, Ben wants to put popcorn inside pancakes so they flip themselves. I think you're on to something there, Ben. And one of you here is already famous. He was on David Letterman. Did you see it? Last May, 2014, Naperville North High School senior Jacob Meyer nearly electrocuted Dave Letterman on late night TV. Not a good career move, not a good career move. Using a Tesla coil and a fluorescent tube to create a lightsaber, Jacob mercifully didn't fry Dave, and in fact made him laugh about how many Star Wars movies he'd seen. Check it out on YouTube, it's pretty funny. And then there's, this is a bit disturbing, Anik Patel of Hyde Park Middle School in Las Vegas thought it important to tell us that he's been in the back of a police car twice. <laughs> Curious, I went to America's Most Wanted website checked out the rogues gallery, and there is somebody there who looks vaguely like Anik. What was it that he did? We'll have to ask him later. And lastly, there are some guys who wrote in their biographies, and very few of you like to write, you told me, but they wrote, and they were really into a little self-flattery, like Farmingdale High School's Suraj Muralaharan, who tells us he likes to take devilishly handsome selfies. He says, I have broken a lot of records at Farmingdale and I've broken a lot of hearts. And he likes to leave a lot of the buttons on his shirt unfastened just so the ladies notice. I like your M.O. there, Siraj. He's got confidence. And lastly, one guy here who doesn't have to write personal ads in the National Science Bowl booklet is Andrew Moten from Tokay High School in Lodi, California. If you were here last year, we told you about him. He met his girlfriend, Anna Vagiris, right here at Science Bowl three years ago. They are still a devoted couple. They like, they write, to bake brownies together. They spend time painting dinosaurs on little children's faces. And unlike last year when they said they were studying entomology together, yeah, this year they're focused on mutualistic species interactions. Hmm. That's one of the best euphemisms I've heard in a long time. All right. On to the competition. We started with our 48 middle schools and our 68 middle schools, high schools rather, 
and we're down to our final two middle school teams. Boy, they're special. Here for the first time ever, Fort Settlement Middle School from Sugarland, Texas. They are undefeated in double elimination and sitting right down here in the front row, they'll be vying against Roberto Clemente Middle School from Germantown, Maryland. They have one loss in double elimination. And in the high school competition, as I said at the top of this, we will have our reigning champion, Mira Loma High School from Sacramento, California. And they have won, under the tutelage of Jim Hill, their coach of 16 years, four championships in the last six years. And they will be competing against Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology from Alexandria, Virginia. Give them a hand. Who won our championship four consecutive years from 2002 to 2005. It will be a battle of the titans. Let's get started. It's Pat again. It's my pleasure now to introduce to you a special guest moderator for the high school competition, uh, Franklin Orr, uh, Lynn Orr. Uh, Dr. Orr was sworn in as DOE's Undersecretary for Science and Energy in December of last year. As undersecretary, he oversees both the Office of Science, which sponsors the National Science Bowl, but also the energy technology offices in the Department of Energy, energy um, efficiency, renewable energy, fossil energy, nuclear energy, and electricity delivery. You will notice that we have considerably more energy questions this year than we had in the past, and uh, they tend to stump people who aren't uh, steeped, steeped in energy like Lynn is. Uh, prior to joining DOE, uh, he was the Keelan and Carton B Carlton Beale Professor in the Department of Energy Resources Engineering at Stanford, uh, which he joined in 1985. Also at Stanford, he was the founding director of the Precourt Institute for Energy, and he was the founding director of the Stanford Global Climate and Energy Project. He served as Dean of the School of, in of, Ener of Earth Sciences sorry, from 1994 to 2002. His own research activities focused on complex fluid mixture flow in porous rock in the Earth's crust, the design of gas injection processes for enhanced oil recovery, and CO2 storage in subsurface formations. And remember that question on what CO2 is good for? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, he holds a PhD in, um, and, uh, he holds a PhD from the University of Minnesota and a bachelor's degree from Stanford, both in chemical engineering. Uh, we're very pleased that he could come be with us today at the National Science Bowl and actually participate as a guest moderator. So with that, we'll get started. Thank you very much. We'd now like to continue with the finals of the 2015 National Science Bowl competition uh, for the high school students. At this time, we'd like to invite to the stage our first team um, coming out of the bracket with no losses, um, City and Team A, Mira Loma High School from Sacramento, California. Mira Loma, please come to the stage. Thank you. And the other team, seated in Team B, coming currently with one loss, will be Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology from Alexandria, Virginia. Thomas Jefferson, please come to the stage. As you can see, can I please remind everyone once again to please turn off all cell phones, electronic devices. We want to minimize any distractions during the match. Thank you very much. All right, as both of you can settle, as a reminder, uh, this is the 
Double admission round number eight. As such, we are now on the stage of the competition where we have visual bonus questions as well as traditional bonus questions. The traditional bonus questions are still 20 seconds to answer once I finish reading them. The visual bonus questions will be read by Dr. Orr, and you'll have 30 seconds to answer once Dr. Orr completes reading the question. Okay. As a result, we'll also have 12 minute halves for the finals rather than 10 minutes due to the incorporation of the visual bonus questions. Are both teams settled? Okay, we have the same officials. Before we get started, we want you guys to buzz in. Make sure the buzzes are working. Um, make sure we can hear you when you speak up. So let's buzz in. Um, we're going to start on the to my right. We're we'll work our way across. Please buzz in. Tell us your name, your year in school, and what you hope to major in when you're in college. B3. My name is Franklin Wong, and I hope to major in mathematics. Thank you. B2. I'm Ross Dempsey. I'm a junior, and I major in physics. Thank you. B Captain. I'm Jenna Song, a senior, and something in either biology or chemistry. Excellent. B1. I'm Matthew Borbano. I am a senior in high school, and I hope to major in either electrical computer engineering or biomedical engineering. Excellent. A1. Hi, my name is Arvind Sundar Rajan. I'm a senior at Miraloma, and I'd like to study electrical engineering next in the fall or yeah, undergrad. Thank you. A Captain. My name is Daniel Shen. I'm a senior at Mariloma, and I would like to major in mechanical engineering. Thank you. A2. My name is Jack. I'm a junior, and I hope to major in math. Excellent. A3. My name is Roger. I am a senior, and I am thinking about doing pre-med. Thank you very much. Again, a reminder to all the teams, when you give your answer, could you please adjust the microphone so it's at mouth level so that we can all hear you clearly when you speak. OK. Do either team have any questions before we get started? So again, this is double admission round number eight. We currently have one team with no losses. If they win, then Miraloma will be the champion. If Thomas Jefferson wins, we will go on to DE round nine, which will determine the champion in a sudden death match. If there are no questions, best of luck to both teams. We'll start double admission round number eight with toss up question number one, math multiple choice. The Piano axioms are assumptions regarding what mathematical structure? W, Boolean algebra. X, non-Euclidean geometry. Y, natural interrupt. A2. Y. Is correct. And your bonus question will be read by Dr. Orr. Bonus question, math. Short oh. answer. The symbol shown in the image was made famous in a popular movie. It consists of an equilateral triangle, its inscribed circle, which is centered at point C, and one altitude. What is the sine of the angle A, B, C? Okay, sine A, B, C. So that's one, uh, that's, so you want sine of two theta, no. Um, do you know tan of two theta, or tan, sine theta is uh, well, root three over three, so tan theta is um, uh, root three. Okay, so it's either tan theta is one over, yeah, root three over three, so two tan theta is Five uh, seconds. Three over three. Um, one half. One half. The answer is incorrect. The correct answer is square root 21 divided by 14. Cause of question number two is for both teams in energy, multiple choice. Flue gas can be used to increase efficiency in energy production. Where can flue gas be found? W, swamps. X, mangroves. Y, coal power interrupt. A captain. Y is correct. And your bonus question is an energy short answer. Identify all of the following three purposes for which x-rays from the DOE advanced light source are being used. One, determining the structure of a protein. Two, determining, determining chemical kinetics. Three, determining the chemical shifts of the protons in a sample. All right, one yes. Yeah, two yeah. Um, um, kinetics? Chemical shifts? Don't they have like an NMR for that? Or? Yeah, all right. One, Probably two. not, okay. yeah. Going, going huh? going, going two. Okay. One and two. Is correct. <coughs> Toss up three is for both teams in physics, short answer. What physical approximation assumes that, compared to the motion of electrons, nuclear interrupt B2, Born Oppenheimer, is correct. Your bonus question is visual and be read by Dr. Orr. Physics, short answer. The image depicts the tracks of particles in a bubble chamber. The tracks labeled A represent k -ons, and the circle event is the production of a sigma baryon. Assuming that the magnetic field points perpendicularly into the image, answer the following two questions. 
What is the charge of the kaons that trace out the long curb arcs labeled A and B on the image? What is, and two, what is the likely identity of particle C which travels in the spiral pattern? C is an electron. Okay. And is that the number two? Um, the charge. Plus two and electron. The answer is incorrect. Answer one is negative and two is electron. Mm -hmm. Toss up number four is an Earth and space short answer. The formation of Mount St. Helens resulted from the subduction of what lithospheric plate? A1. Pacific plate. So that's incorrect. B, Captain. North American plate. Sorry, it's actually Juan de Fuca. Hmm. Okay. Puzzle number five is in biology, multiple choice. Which of the following proteins would you most likely find in a mature mammalian erythrocyte? W, spectrin. Interrupt. A3. W. Is correct. And your bonus in biology is short answer. What biochemical pathway in prokaryotes anaerobically converts acetyl-CoA to glucose? All right, <laughs> glass glycolysis. Oh, no. In prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. Is yeah. it, are you sure? Wait, I thought like the wood Lundahl. Say, say like wood Lundahl pathway. Oh yeah, that's true. Glass glycolysis. Oh, wood Lundahl pathway. Wood Lundahl pathway. No, I'm sorry. It's the glyoxylate cycle. Toss up six is an energy multiple choice. Which of the following is a challenge associated with thorium fuel? W, natural thorium contains no fissile isotopes. X, thorium is estimated to be about one third as abundant on Earth as uranium. Y, thorium fuel has worse neutron economy than uranium fuel. Z, thorium fuels have a lower melting point than your interrupt. B2. Z. Is incorrect, I'll repeat the question. Toss up, energy, multiple choice. Which of the following is a challenge associated with thorium fuel? W, natural thorium contains no fissile isotopes. X, thorium is estimated to be about one-third as abundant on Earth as uranium. Y, thorium fuel has worse neutron economy than uranium fuel. Z, thorium fuels have a lower melting point than uranium fuels. A, Captain. Y. Sorry, the correct answer was W. Toss-up seven for both teams, chemistry, multiple choice. Which of the following statements is true concerning the geometry of approach of a nucleophile on a carbonyl group of a ketone? W, above the carbonyl plane at an obtuse angle. X, above the carbonyl plane at a right angle. Y, above the carbonyl plane at an acute angle. Z, parallel to the carbonyl plane at slope zero. A, Captain. W. Is correct. And your bonus in chemistry is multiple choice. Consider a complex with a platinum two center with two chloride and two carbonyl ligands in a cis geometry. What is the first mechanistic step of ligand substitution in this compound? W, a dissociation of carbonyl ligand. X, dissociation of chloride ligand. Y, association of attacking ligand trans to a carbonyl ligand. Z, association of attacking ligand trans to a chloride ligand. Okay. You mean your choices? Yeah. Z. Sorry, the correct answer was Y. Toss up eight is in math, multiple choice. If the point XY in the Cartesian plane is represented by the two by one matrix with first row X and second row Y, multiplying this matrix on the left by the two by two matrix with first row one, negative one, zero, and second row zero, one, is interrupt. A2. Negative X, Y. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'll repeat the question. Toss up math, multiple choice. If the point XY in the Cartesian plane is represented by the two by one matrix with first row X and second row Y, multiplying this matrix on the left by the two by two matrix with first row negative one, zero, and second row zero, one, is equivalent to which of the following transformations? W, reflection over the X axis. X, reflection over the Y axis. Y, reflection through the origin. Z, rotation by 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. B3. X. Is correct. And your bonus question is visual. Be read by Dr. Orr. Math, short answer. 
The figure below, shown below, which is not drawn to scale, is a frustum of a right circular cone, including the radii of the two bases and the height. To the nearest integer, what is the volume of this frustum? Five seconds. 199. 199. Incorrect. Answer is 318. <laughs> Task number nine is for both teams. It's in physics, and it is short answer. Consider an ensemble of non-interacting bosons, each of mass m, that occupy the energy states of a one-dimensional particle in a box system at temperature T. Assuming we are in the classical limit, identify all of the following three modifications that would increase the entropy of the system. One, decreasing the length of the box. Two, increasing the mass of the particles. Three, increasing the temperature of the system. A2. All of them. So that's incorrect. B2. Two and three. Is correct. And your bonus question in physics is short answer. A particle in a one-dimensional system has Lagrangian L of X equals M open parentheses, x dot, close parentheses, squared, minus ax, open parentheses, x dot, close parentheses. What is the acceleration of the particle as a function of x and x dot? Back in Lagrangian, please. I did not get that. I didn't That's get the thing down. Eight. Um, you said the acceleration. What are you doing? Um, the, 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 this is the potential. This is, this would just be eight over, they say in terms of m, right? Five seconds. Eight over yeah. m. 8 over M? Sorry, the correct answer is 0. Okay. Toss up 10, chemistry multiple choice. Which of the following diatomic molecules has the highest fundamental vibrational frequency? W, H, F, X, H, B, R, Y, N, O, Z, O, 2. A, Captain. Z. Is incorrect. B, Captain. H, F. Is correct. And your bonus question is visual and be read by Dr. Orr. Chemistry short answer. A YBCO high temperature superconductor crystallizes in the perovskite unit cell shown in the image. The formula unit of the YBCO crystal is also shown with X and Y being unknown coefficients of copper and oxygen atoms respectively. Answer the, two, the following two questions. One, what are the values of X and Y? Two, what is the fraction of copper ions that are in the plus three oxidation state? This is simple cubic, so that's one. That's the copper, I think. Wait, but then that's, this is just one barium, right? So that means that it's one copper to one barium, so there's two copper. And then oxygen. Oxygen is six, but what do you have? Getting two copper. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Five seconds. I'm saying two. Okay. Two copper, four um, oxygen, and uh, half. Incorrect. Answer one, x equals three and y equals seven. Uh, and um, two, one third. Cost of 11 is in math, multiple choice. Which of the following could be the sum of the angle measures in degrees of a triangle in spherical geometry? W, 179. X, interrupt. A2. W is incorrect, I'll repeat for team B, toss up math multiple choice. Which of the following could be the sum of the angle measures in degrees of a triangle in spherical geometry? W, 179, X, 180, Y, 181, Z, the answer depends on the radius of the sphere. B2, Y, is correct. And your bonus in math is short answer. The year 2015 is the setting for the 25th National Science Bowl. When the number 2015 to the 25th power is expressed in scientific notation, what is the exponent of 10? Five seconds. 83. I'm sorry, it was 82. And that is the half.
We will now take a five minute break. Okay, do we have any substitutions at the half? Could you please buzz in and test your buzzer, please, B1? B1. My name is Tiger Zhang. I am a junior, and I hope to study either biology or chemistry. Thank you. All right. We have gone through 11 questions in the first half. Uh, the score is currently quite close. Mira Loma, 30. Thomas Jefferson, 28. Uh, we have another 12 minute half to go, and we have 14 questions remaining. Any questions before we get started? Wait, hold on. Yes, B3. The halves are uh, 12 minutes, not 12 and a half? They're 12 minutes each. Oh, okay. Correct. Any additional questions? All right, well, good luck. We have a good match going here. Uh, let's continue. Question number 12, toss-up energy, multiple choice. Recently, researchers at Argonne National Lab subjected gadolinium silicide to immense pressure. Which of the following properties of the material did they expect to change under high pressure? W, chemical composition. X, nuclear dipole moment. Y, electronic orbital shapes. Z, permanent magnet strength. A, Captain. Y. Sorry, it's incorrect. B, Captain. C. Is correct. And your bonus in energy is short answer. Researchers at the Joint Bioenergy Institute have engineered a bacterial organism to produce isopentanol, a potential source of biogasoline. What is the genus and species of the organism they engineered? E. coli? I'm sorry, the correct answer is Escherichia coli, full genus and species. Oh, oops. Toss-up 13 is Earth and space, short answer. What unit of measure quantifies the density of a trace gas, such as ozone, integrated over a vertebral column of Earth's atmosphere? A, Captain. Dobson's. That is correct. And your bonus question is an Earth and space, multiple choice. Which of the following pairs of choices does not correctly match a taxon of animals with a geologic period during which its members were important reef builders? W, Archaeocyaths and early Cambrian. X, Sloractinian corals and Pliocene. Y, Tabulate corals and Devonian. Z, Rudists and Permian. X was Pliocene and coral. I'm just saying X. I'm just saying X. X. Sorry, the correct answer was Z. Okay. Toss up 14 is for both teams. It's in math and it is multiple choice. What property of the real number system is not possessed by the system of complex numbers? W, ordering. X, existence I'm of the interrupt. A2. W. Is correct. And your bonus question is visual and be read by Dr. Orr. Math, short answer. The image shows a standard soccer ball, which is a rounded version of a truncated icosahedron, also shown. The latter is composed of 20 faces that are regular hexagons, as well as other faces that are regular pentagons. Find the total number of vertices, faces, and edges for the truncated icosahedron. Okay, so there's 60 faces. Um, there's uh, edges. Um, okay, so maybe I should go. No, wait, there's 60 vertices. Um, isn't there like 22? How many of these things are uh, these? So, oh wait, so there, there would have to be um, uh, uh, three per one of these, or like two per one of these. So yeah, let's go for it. Let's go, um, go 60, 60. Five seconds. 60, 60, 122. 60, 60, and 122. Incorrect. Uh, 60 vertices, 32 faces, 90 edges. Toss of 15 in physics, short answer. What electrical circuit is used to measure the resistance of an unknown circuit using interrupt? A, Captain. Wheatstone Bridge. Is correct. And your bonus question in physics is short answer. An engineer wants to build an LC tank circuit to tune her radio to a one megahertz station. Using a one nano Henry inductor, what size capacitor to the nearest microfarad will she need to construct the circuit? Okay, so it's one over square root of LC. Times one over two pi. Um, oh. No. Okay. Oh, right, wait. The, the, that's the uh, time constant. So you actually want root LC. So a uh, root times the negative nine. Yeah. Um, times Five three. seconds. It's like ten to the negative no, like third. Ten by to the time. 
Eight. Sorry, the correct answer is 25. <laughs> Toss up 16, chemistry, short answer. Identify all of the following three statements that are true of carbenes. One, carbenes can be formed by alpha elimination reactions. Two, triplet carbenes have an empty p orbital. Three, carbenes are positively charged species. A captain. One only. Is correct. <clears throat> and your bonus in chemistry is short answer. What law of photochemistry states that almost all photochemistry occurs from the lowest excited states? Five seconds. Baldwin's rules. No, I'm sorry, it was actually Kasha's rules. Toss up number 17, biology, short answer. What protein assembles into a polyhedral cage on the cytosolic side of a cell membrane in order to form a pit, which buds off, interrupt? A1. Clathrins. Is correct. And your bonus in biology is short answer. Identify all of the following three choices that predominantly act as inhibitory neurotransmitters. One serotonin, two, gamma aminobutyric acid, three, glutamate. All right, just GABA is in, I think it's tool. Yeah, okay, I don't know about serotonin, but I don't know. What was three? Uh, uh, three, glu three glutamate. Glutamate. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, two only then? Two only. Yeah. Two only. Sorry, it's actually one and two. Toss up 18, physics, multiple choice. English physicist Henry Moseley observed the frequency of the most intense short wavelength X-ray line in the atomic spectrum of each of the elements. Which of the following relationships between frequency and mass or atomic number would predict a straight line if plotted? W, square root of frequency versus mass number. X, frequency versus mass number. Y, square root interrupt. A1. Z. Is incorrect. I'll repeat the question. Toss up physics, multiple choice. English physicist Henry Moseley observed the frequency of the most intense short wavelength X-ray line in the atomic spectrum of each of the elements. Which of the following relationships between frequency and mass or atomic number would produce a straight line if plotted? W, square root of frequency versus mass number. X, frequency versus mass number. Y, square root of frequency versus atomic number. Z, frequency versus atomic number. B2. X. Sorry, the correct answer was Y. Toss up 19 is in Earth and space, and it is multiple choice. In which of the following locations could one find a Bach globule? W, star forming region. Interrupt. A1. W. Is correct. And your bonus question is visual and be read by Dr. Orr. Earth and space, short answer. On the left is a high resolution image from the Quick Scat Pass across the North Atlantic on March 9, 2009, with red, blue, and light purple wind barbs indicating gale force winds, and dark purple and embedded light red wind barbs indicating storm force winds. Looking at the image on the right of an individual wind barb, from what direction is the indicated wind blowing and what is the speed in knots? Uh, if we're going like six, <coughs> uh, 25 knots, and I don't know, because like maybe there's a 10, 25. Okay, how do I find the speed? Um, you don't, you something to do with the color. I don't know what direction. It's probably oh, going, it's going like like northeast. This. Wait, what? no, just this bar. Oh, like this doesn't matter really. Yeah. Oh. Uh, north northeast. Then? Sure. All right, fine. Northeast and 25 knots is correct. <laughs> Toss up 20 for both teams is in biology. Short answer: Which two of the 20 standard amino acids are commonly found in unstructured loops? B2. Leucine and isoleucine. Sorry, it's incorrect. A3. Proline and glycine. That is correct. Your bonus question is visual and will be read by Dr. Orr. Biology, short answer. The image depicts the brain of a patient with Rasmussen's encephalitis. Answer the following two questions about the image. What technique was used to generate these images? Two, the protons in what molecules are being imaged using this technique? All right, is one EEG logger? Yeah. All right, one is electrolytic okay. electrolytic And two is what was the question? Uh, what protons? Protons from what molecule are being it's a pretty significant molecule. Like, could be, I don't know, like dopamine or something. But what was the disorder? Uh, you know, it's like, maybe it's like what B2? Huh? huh? It might be B2. Yeah. See what it is? It's encephalitis. Oh, wait. It's encephalitis. So it's like some sort of thing. What was it like plaques? No, those are kind of like nerve things. Five seconds. 
Electroencephalogram and dopamine. Is incorrect. One, magnetic resonance imaging, and two, is water. Toss-up 21 is an energy multiple choice. Platinum is widely used in polymer electrolyte fuel cells. What role does platinum play in the cells? W, interrupt. E1. X. Is incorrect. I'll repeat for team A. Toss-up energy multiple choice. Platinum is widely used in polymer electrolyte fuel cells. What role does platinum play in the cells? W, dehydration medium. X, ion exchange medium. Y, diffusion medium. Z, catalyst. A, Captain. Z is correct. Your bonus question is visual and we read by Dr. Orr. Energy, short answer. Depicted in the, in the image is a genome editing technology currently being developed by DOE's Joint Genome Institute. Answer the following two questions regarding the image. One, what is the term for the repetitive DNA loci that are crucial to this genome editing system? Two, what is the function of this genome editing in the prokaryotes in which it was identified? All right, one is like what CRISPR. One? one is CRISPR, and two is to combat viral genetic material. Like CRISPR? Yeah. Oh, to like cut up, oh, yeah, yeah, cut up and combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like cut up viral genetic material? Yeah. And one is CRISPR. CRISPR? It's spelled like CRISPR. CRISPR, yeah. yeah. CRISPR and to cut up viral genetic material. Is incorrect. CRISPR is correct, but the uh, uh, question two, the answer is immunity. Uh, I'd like to challenge that. Can you please state your challenge. Um, Stop the clock. The immunity uh, conferred by this uh, group is due to it cutting up the viral genes, so the viral genes can't attack the host. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we've discussed, and uh, the answer that given is correct. It, it is immunity to viral infection, therefore immunity is um, correct, but so is responding to viruses. Uh, okay, that was bonus question number 21. Um, Miraloma got it correct, so we will then pick up with question number 22. It's a toss-up in math, and it is short answer. What is the remainder when 987,654 is divided by 9? A2. 1. Sorry, it's incorrect. B3. 3. Is correct. And your bonus in math is short answer. To the nearest integer, what is 2.98 raised to the fifth power? Five seconds. Uh, 242. 242. Sorry, it's actually 235. Toss up 23, Earth and Space, short answer. What is the name for the quaternary cover composed of unconsolidated sediment that was eroded and redeposited by streams? B, Captain. Alluvium. Is correct. 
and in bones in earth and space is short answer. If a palynologist studying a lake sediment core finds predominantly grass pollen at the bottom of the core and then predominantly spruce pollen at the top of the core, what does the change in pollen suggest about the past climate of the area? Five seconds. Oxygen content of the atmosphere increased. No, I'm sorry. The correct answer is it cooled. And that is the end of the match. Uh, congratulations to Mira Loma, our 2015 High School National Science Bowl champions. Congratulations also to Thomas Jefferson, our 2015 National Science Bowl runners-up. Well done, both teams.